Hello everyone, welcome back to Newsroom. I'm Chella Smith. This is your Middle East U.S. Entertainment News here on YouTube. I air on Fridays. I bring you the latest on reforms and economics Iraq based on reports put out by the Middle East news media outlets. I do this weekly review and it's based off my interest. Thank you everyone for being here. Last week we talked about the dinar trading in Iranian banks, Iraq's GDP, and the growth in the gold reserves ranking number four. Let's talk about this week's headlines. The 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly began in New York under the theme Solutions Through Solidarity, Sustainability, and Science. And the media reported that the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Gutters, and the President of the 77th session of the General Assembly, Chapa Kiroshi, supervised the opening. And on Monday, Kiroshi pledged to build bridges and to make the association work more impact oriented. He also adds that his role will be to build bridges and make the work of the General Assembly more oriented towards achieving the desired effect. He plans to pursue an integrated agenda for peace, security, human rights, and sustainability, which are the three goals that reinforce each other, he says. He also says that we must support all of them, otherwise they will all fall. Shafak News reports the American ambassador to Iraq, Elena Romanovsky, reveals on Tuesday a meeting of diplomats from 11 embassies and international organizations to help increase trades and investments in Iraq. Romanovsky said in a statement issued by the embassy, which was received by Shafak News Agency, stating that the United States supports economics reforms and a strong private sector in Iraq, which creates more job opportunities for the people, more investment opportunities and a prosperous Iraq. Shabak News on Monday reports the Ministry of Oil affirms Iraq's commitment to exporting its full quota established under the OPEC agreement and the determinants and working with the members of the organization and its allies from outside the organizations to achieve balance in the global markets. This came while he chaired the monthly price meeting of crude oil. According to a statement, the statement quoted that the Minister Ashan Abdul-Jamar Ishmael as saying that Iraqi aims to increase the production and export capabilities in the coming years by promoting investments in oil and the energy sector, noting importance of investments in sustaining and strengthening Iraq's position among the producing countries and maintaining its influential position in the energy markets. The Ministry of Oil stressed Iraq's commitment to support global investments in the oil and energy sector, stressing the fulfillment of the financial and contractual obligations. The statement of Ministry of Oil indicated that Iraqi's oil pricing meetings is held on a monthly basis under the chairmanship of Ministry of Oil and its presence of the undersecretaries of the ministry, the Director General of Oil Marketing Company, SOMO, and the Directors of each of the financial supervisions, the economic departments, the study department, the technical department, contracts and license, and the concerned bodies and departments in oil marketing companies. Malazine News reports the political crisis in Iraq caused by the last elections is approaching the completion of its first year. In light of international moves to end the crisis with an initiative that is preparing to be put forward by the representatives of the Security General of the United Nations in Iraq, Janine Plasheret. According to the information obtained by Malazine News, the international communities is increasingly concerned about the development of the recent events in Iraq. Iraq, which has reached aimed clashes and is ready to intervene through the United Nations and the European Union mission to reach a guaranteed agreement between Iraq political parties. Since the early parliamentary elections that took place on the 10th of last October, Iraq has been living in a state of political impasse that reached its climate during the past months when the Green Zone witnessed aimed clashes that resulted into casualties and injuries before the leader of the Sadrist movement, Muqtada al sadrs requested the withdrawal of his supporters from the regime green zone. A few days ago, al sadrs issued a statement from several points in which he demands early elections and the retention of a president of the republic and ministers. But the coordination framework that includes the Shiite forces and is considered the largest bloc refuses to keep al-Kazimi and insist on forming a government headed 
by the candidate Mohammed Shiad al-Sudani. The deputy permanent representative of the Republic of Iraq in Geneva participated in an informal consultation session of September 9th, which was invited by the chairman of the working group on Iraq's accession to the World Trade Organization, the WTO, the ambassador, and in the presence of the deputy general of the organization, and also the director of the International Trade Department at the Minister of Commerce, in addition to many representatives of the member countries of the organization. The deputy permanent representative delivered a speech in which was explained the great process made in the files of Iraq's accession to the organization represented by submitting eight documents and at the same time stressing that Iraq is working to complete the offers of goods and services as soon as possible and concluded the speech by requesting the support of member states regarding the contracts of the third working group for Iraq's accession as as soon as possible. Baghdad Mawazin News reports the Central Bank of Iraq announced the foreign reserves has risen to more than $85 billion. The bank stated in a statement its foreign reserves has reached more than $85 billion U.S. dollars, which is the highest level achieved by the Central Bank since 2003. Adding gold reserves also with the Central Bank exceeded 130.4 tons with a value of $7 billion, bringing Iraq to the 13th place globally and the fourth in the Arab world. Shafak News then went on reporting. On Sunday, the World Bank expressed its readiness to support the Iraqi government in the fields of development and achieving the economic reform that the country needs. The media of the Ministry of Planning said in the statement the minister received that the new special representative of the World Bank in Iraq, Richard Abdul Noor, and his company delegations explaining during the meeting aspects of joint cooperation between the two sides in various economic issues were discussed and the development, especially in relations to the working mechanisms of recovery and reconstruction fund in Iraq and the social fund for development. The statement quoted that the minister confirming Iraq's keenness and strong desire to strengthen relations with the World Bank to serve development in the country, indicating that all projects being implemented within the two funds should be among the priorities identified by Iraq according to the development gaps. The representative of the World Bank expressed the World Bank's readiness to provide more support to the efforts of Ministry of Planning and the Iraqi government in the field of supporting development and achieving economic reforms, which Iraq needs after the crisis it has faced for the recent years. This next reading I found extremely interesting. Baghdad Absalus reports former U.S. President Donald Trump's advisor, Jared Kushner, reveals that the former Iraqi Prime Minister Hader al-Abadi expressed in a meeting between them during a visit to Iraq this desire for them to hold bilateral meetings and told him about the willingness to give some money in exchange for protection that provided by the United States, but he wanted the cheapest deal. In the recent release, breaking history, Kushner said that when he met Iraqi Prime Minister al-Abadi, he asked him to speak privately. Kushner revealed in his memoir, Breaking History, which was released in late August, that they could get 20% of Iraqi oil revenues in exchange for providing military support to Iraq. But the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Defense prevented that. Jared Kushner talked in his memoir about the visit to Iraq Monday, April 3rd, 2022, saying I had no plans to visit Iraq in the first month of Donald Trump's administration, but weeks before that, and at the dinner with Donald Trump and a number of military leaders, General Dunford pulled me aside, asked me to participate in this tour of Iraq, and told me this tour will give me a real up-close picture of the capabilities and compositions of our forces, and I can pass this information on to the president. He pointed out that after their visit to Baghdad and then going to Mosul and inspecting America's forces there, he met with the prime 
Prime Minister Hader al Abadi, adding that al Abadi asked me to hold a bilateral meeting. He had taken Trump's statement about the need for countries to pay large sums to cover military expenses seriously. A former advisor to Trump, he wrote in his memoirs, noting that Abadi told him, we are willing to pay some money for our protection by America, but that he would be converting the cheapest deal. Jared Kushner adds, we could have obtained 20% of Iraqi oil revenues in exchange for military support, but Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State, and Jim Mathis, the Secretary of Defense, considered that Trump would be angry with this proposal and postponed it indefinitely. And you've been watching Newsroom Weekly Review. I'm Chala Smith, your Middle East to U.S. entertainment news on reforms and economics, bringing you the latest in our news without having to keep up with all the different outlets. I'm here on YouTube every Friday, so don't forget to subscribe. And if you like my content, kindly hit the like button. I have opened up a Telegram group under Newsroom Chala Smith, where you can review all my shows, appearances, and also where I'm showing whoever wants to learn how I'm preparing to do my exchange. You can find the link in the community chat by following the instructions to Newsroom Chala Smith. If you would like to join us daily, look for the pinned comments of the EDU 102 Newsroom Chala Smith asked to join the group where you can join me and our Newsroom family on Mondays or Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Zoom calls with special topics and guests each week. If you miss those calls due to prior obligations, you can always join us on Patreon for all the replays. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Newsroom. I I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. I'll see you next week. Take care.